Welcome back to Case Closed, Anime Review Episode 137. Yeah, it seems like it's been a while since, and it's been like a little bit since I actually reviewed this on the day it comes out. Which, lately, I've been reviewing not on the correct day because I was not how late it got. Last weekend, I didn't review on Saturday purely because I was getting kind of sleepy at that point. Yeah, I was getting quite tired, so I just basically didn't do it and did it the following day. But today, basically, I watched it, I got it done with, and it's only about 7.30. Good night me for doing it. Now, this episode is, well, this one discussing the 1,025th episode of the anime. Yes. Which is basically called... Momoji Oka's Challenge Part 2. Yep. That is the name of the episode. And I will be also discussing the 1,081st chapter of the manga. Excuse me. Yes. This one pretty much finishes up adapting this arc. Yeah, covering chapters 1041 and 1042. Which means, as in this very episode, the anime is exactly 39 chapters behind the manga. And, luck enough, next week is not another canon episode. No, it's basically an original. So, pretty much in the way we do wrap up this case, which... I'm kind of glad we only had two episodes of this. I'm also glad we didn't stretch this out. Because I think the last time I could think of they had a four-part, they did stretch out three episodes. Well, at least this time, they didn't. Nope, actually... Well, I scratched it. They, they, the last time they had a four-parter... They did not stretch this out at all. They basically kept it for two chapters. Uh, basically, from what I could tell rereading the chapters, it seems as though they didn't really change very much. Though. They changed maybe like maybe one minor thing, but yes. And by the way, this arc is, I should point out though, was the second official arc I reviewed when I, when I started reviewing this series two years ago. Yeah, this was the second one I officially reviewed. So we start off with Maguire and Tagaki showing up to, well, investigate the case. Of course, Hitori and Conan do point out various things. Like, for instance, the man was murdered. Not killed by accident. He was definitely murdered because, well, of the glasses. Then, of course, they suspect various things over the course of the episode of who potentially killed him and why he was saying it's a back, per se. They also pointed out, though, that these three brothers showed up at pretty much around the same time, and one of these three could be the potential killer. Who is the killer? I'll reveal that in a minute. So, then, of course, at their talk to a bit, they go outside, which, good they did that, and, of course, Conan is sweating like crazy because, like, it's hot. <laughs> I'm thinking, it's hot in the episode. Must take place during the summertime because today it was freezing cold. It was like 55 degrees during the daytime, and now it's only at about 58. It's been really cold today. Yeah, it, that, that I thought was really weird. Like, in the episode, it's hot. He, and in here, in real life, it's freezing cold. Yep. So, pretty much, and discussing, they also mentioned that the brother, like, they haven't seen him in 30 years. They do have a story they mentioned in the last episode mentioned by their brothers, and they kind of corrected what true what really happened. According to the youngest of three brothers, they had, see, they had this scar across their, their the palm of their hands, which, is this a change from the manga? Did they change the hands? Shockingly, no, they did not change the hands where they were, because I think if I remember correctly, it was the right hand. And, yeah. So, they mentioned myself being heavy, and of course, the youngest of these three brothers thought it was the pot. Nope, it turns out it was the mother, because she was chubby. Yes, seriously. So, at least, got, at least no one points out, though, like, man, what brave boys they got to protect their mom from being burned. Nobody brings up in the episode. I thought that was kind of weird. Heck, in the manga, this it's like this, too. Where it's like, no brings of how brave these four boys are. And they also mentioned about something and returns them. Like, can Crab and 
a leather jacket, a watch. And it was suspected first that he had an allergy. That part was true. Initially, he thought he had a crab allergy. But Itori pointed out, though, that's partially true. Turns out he had an allergic reaction to metal. Yes, he was allergic to metal. That's why he returned the jacket, the canned crab food, and the watch. And what, do you wear plastic glasses in Odyssey? It's possible to say at least. And as you know in the flashback, that it turns out the youngest universe is not the actual brother. Oh no, it turns out this guy is not him at all. According to the guy who's there, it's actually not the brother. Because the actual younger brother died of a sudden illness. What this illness was, was never explained in the episode. So, it turns out though, the death was definitely by complete accident. Like, because he showed up claiming to be the youngest brother. So about treasure. And it turns out the treasure I'm talking about was basically the pot they saved their mom from. And, of course, he accidentally killed them, and then he switched glasses. They did point out, though, about the glasses, that the, the glasses that the victim was wearing was not actually his glasses. It turns out that they did they guess this correctly, excuse me, very early on, that the glasses the victim was wearing was not theirs, and the Copra, who actually was the fake younger brother, switched them. Yeah, it turned, yeah, the way they figured out was because of the glasses. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, point out with one wearing glasses, the one because he went the wrong glass. That's the reason why that he actually, well, that's why they point out he was a victim. And it also turns out though, thanks to the security, oh yeah, it's, it's a big social media event today. And of course, Adori feels though a good chance to confess to, to Katja. And he tries to, but then she leaves because of Majibi's butler drag having her go away because of. A picture because Momoji wants to take a picture with her and Ran in front of the ship for a romantic spot. Of course, Hattori thought basically the top of the staircase would be a romantic spot. No, in front of the ship basically is better that way. Oh yeah, and they do figure out who the actual owner of the mansion was. It turns out, and this is quite interesting, it's, it's basically a bit of a nod to the series itself. It turns out the owner, who passed away, was in fact the first victim of the same drug that turned Sichi Kudo to Conan Ewagawa. Yes. Who was the, well, they referred to him as a brother-in-law, but he was basically the fake brother of Sarah's middle brother. Like the male kid. Like, okay. And what did this just do? Set up the very next story arc, which does feature him, by the way. I'm like, that's cool. I like that. That's a really cool thing they did that, where they set the very next story arc. But we're not getting that next week because we're getting an original episode, which I'm interested in this one. This one looks interesting. All right. It was actually a pretty good episode. I at least kind of hints the fact they actually didn't change much of anything. Yeah, mostly just digital camera shots, but otherwise, though, it virtually no change. Yeah. No change of, let's say... People's perspective, where positioning of characters are. No, it's exactly the same as the manga. It's kudos for the Amber Dune. All right, next up we have the finale for this particular three-part story arc. Known as the Inheritor of the Will. Yeah, here's the cover image. It's um chapter 1081. Yes, that is the name of this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically we have Sato... Armando and Tagagi, where of course this picks up right where the last chapter left off, where Sato tried to use a kidnapper, but he got away. And oh yeah, by the way, the boy is real. His name is Alan. He's like, I think he's okay, but nope. It turns out actually there's another victim besides him. Yeah, it turns out he was actually kidnapped while playing with his friend. So, the figure has not been found yet, so they try. So, the reason why they ran away because he wasn't tied up. The kidnapper warned him if he ran away from himself, the other kid would be in trouble. Am I right? Yeah, I guess he kind of nodded at the other, but 
and we ha we haven't had the other kids' parents say anything, even though even their own childs can never come home. Yeah, they mentioned that Yuji he transferred away, but he came back to return my balloon to foot. Basically, his soccer ball. So he came to play in the park for a bit. Bardu? It means football in French. <clears throat> yeah, it's weird though. Even though that Ami says Barundu, he says balloon da foot. I'm like, did she misheard him him pronouncing soccer ball? I see. And Mono was like, if that that boy Yoji transferred away to a school in, in any area, it's possible to come here by train or bus. Like, Kebar or or Saitama. He didn't tell his parents, but when he came here to return the football. A.K.A. the soccer ball. He borrowed from Alan and then got kidnapped. He church will request to fulfill the he be filed in the area. Larry, this is not case at all, and we wouldn't do anything about it. So, Alan, <clears throat> we locked into. I don't know. You don't remember? He took here. I don't know. He told me to lie down in the back seat until we arrived out. So, until I arrived, I could see out the window. I could hear the radio. It spoke about the road. We part when we arrive. Perhaps it's our radio traffic news? Yeah. Oi. Yes. Then if you arrived at 11.58, you must depart it at 11.50, which means the time required to get here is about 30 minutes. Yes. If Yoji is being held captive in a place 30 minutes from here, we can ask more information from him, but... Yuji would be more danger if the kidnapper returns to the place with so detectives Sato and Takagi, as well as Amando. Can you search for him in by car in three different routes? And they do it. Yep, they go searching for him. And of course, we have Sato in her red sports car. By the way, her sports car used to belong to her awesome late father, who was also a police detective. I believe he was actually killed in the series, and I believe she actually keeps his badge. Yeah, so which makes her the only... Uh, character in the series who actually is the who is the actual offspring of a detective who actually was part of the police department. She's the only second generation member. Uh, Tagagi and Amando, like, well, to, uh, Amando is part of the public security. Uh, I think it's like the public security department. I believe it is. Excuse me. I believe they're like the best way to describe them. Uh, I don't have full details about what exactly this organization entails, but from what I can tell, there possibly could be the Japanese version of the CIA or possibly even the FBI. So they go looking around, and of course they, and of course you have detective boys all stay there, and yeah, Nina's there too. Then Alan, thank you, touch. Then you keep in touch there on a group call. Yeah. So. So apparently Conan knows French along with English. So basically knows English, not only Japanese, which is his native language. He also apparently knows English and French. <laughs> okay. So that's something new. What place you? Those look like. Is it one story? Is there anyone living in there? Or it's their house? It has many rooms. It also has an answer. Answer means elevator. It also has many rooms. A condominium apartment complex. Right. You use the exit whenever you went out, but something always strange happened. Door was open. Who was inside? So are you going up? We went up and doors open again. We say, You're not going down. He always lie, I forgot something I mistook. Get up a sure careless, right? He's such an idiot. <laughs> if he always did that, he must mean something. Possibly. You don't want to know your actual captain's ransom. 
the Catholic Roman location, hit the highest floor first, then went down from there. Did the thing happen when you came back as well? Oi! It means yes. Did the bunny push? He don't like the buttons, but the highest number was five. Of course, the translate is like 20th to 44 is in Japanese. It's the second and third floor. A story building. If you exclude the ground and the highest floors, we either the second or third floor. Could see even the window? Well, it was never open, but I could see the dawn's set, sun, sunset. On the top building were many kids who were swimming. I see. We see both sunrise and sunset. Possibly it was a corner room. Because swimming could be a primary school's rooftop pool. Yeah, I saw corn a lot chatting about where this pool might be. So we kept them there. So, but this building has near a rooftop. So, there's only now you can see from the car window sky and Sula Mira. Mira is chestnut. A casting of chestnut, a fairy tale. Now, Mira means brown in French. So, is where they store grass for cattle. The silo, right? Oh, oi, that's it. Castle. <laughs> but that thing does look like a castle. You have a flying flag in that castle. Rogue. Red flag flying. Yes. Uh, also, cross net. Cross net, red flag. Crescent red flag, like a bakery. To have bread. Crescent means crescent moon in French. Allen. Is it possible the flag you saw was a flag of Turkey? Oh, yes, that's it. Turkish flag. That means restaurant style is trench cuisine. <laughs> yep, and they point out the restaurant. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and of course, Takagi's one finds a restaurant. They go look for them. I look for the map and the dresses. Alan, Alan said, "The captain must be over third block, second lot. They find where he is. It's a driver, kind of man. Yeah, I think right now, but doesn't mean he was served. Roger. And of course, he said, I'll make a man out of you. Date. Yeah, his former partner. So he goes to the fourth floor." Yeah, and then here's, here's, here's the kid. I'll say it's this creepy guy. Like that. <laughs> You're lying. Alan comes, Alan, do you protect him right now? Safe place, safe place now. Is that true? Yes. He's waiting for rescue. Are you the officer who came out of the cafe? <laughs> that rich bat ran away. I set up this kid. Uh, big bro, thank you. Is that big bro covering this here? He's already dead. A year ago. <laughs> Don't joke around me. I'm not joking. It was me who beat him to death after all. You. You jerk. <laughs> yep. And he got beaten by <laughs> him. Yep. Hey, you want to say that? But of course, his girlfriend Sato, basically. <laughs> Apparently, the guy got beaten up too. And arrested like, oh crap. He's like, ouch. You even lied. You even lied to beat that kidnapper's partner to crime death. Just you know, I make a child go. This is my time. Please let this this sort of thing pass. <laughs> like, hmm. I think our oh no. Same brain as mine. True. I was handing down for my late father. I just said that. Yep. Oh, is that so? Hey, you were made for. Yeah, and we kind of see that we see Amanda when he was a police officer before we joined the Public Security Bureau. I haven't done anything, though. And, and then, of course, the friends reunite. Everything's all good. And we see McGuire showing up. Yep. 
Kind of late for the party, man. And of course, everything's not good now. Alan, he brought his, he brought Alan's brother Jean here. Yeah, then apparently he's like looking around like, who are we looking for? Where's the playset with the toothpicks? He probably essentially had my brother. His breasts, right? Toothpick? It's a good thing, right? Please, not accept against, but go for this time. Thank you. I'll have a date set. And then we see the chapter end with Amondo having a toothpick in his mouth. <laughs> yes, very heavily implied. Well, thing is, it was revealed basically in a flashback early on that he went to the academy with date. Which is interesting. I like the ending of this chapter. It's pretty good. Uh, good amount of development for Tagagi. And just overall, really good chapter. I give it a 10 out of 10. It's a good, well-paced chapter. Nothing really bad about it, per se, but I love the fact that it has a lot of, bit of continuity. Not, like, a minor continuity nod for one character, but it's great. Okay, so that's it for of you. I'm surprised one went for 20 minutes. Look at the runtime. It's like, 20 minutes. Like, wow, that's something. Yeah. These ones, don't use, they might run this on occasionally when I do a review of the manga chapter, because usually there's a lot to talk about when it comes to these manga chapters. But that was a good chapter, and you might be asking, Nick, when is next chapter come out? Because it's clearly not coming out next week. Uh, let me look it up on here. Hmm. Okay, so the very next chapter is going to release in December. Okay. That should be interesting. Yeah, so we have to wait, like, not very long, actually. Like, I'd say, like, about a month. Yeah, not not that long of a wait. I do appreciate that. That that does occasionally happen. It happened between the previous two cases, where it was, like, a month. This case basically came about two months after, a little over two months after the previous case. Yeah. But uh, what the next arc will be, don't know yet. Okay, so, yeah. That's it for Sick Love You. And that's probably going to be it for video today. Because unless I'm how much Comic Corner, that's going to be pretty much it. So tomorrow, expect your reviews for Black Clover, My Hero Academia, Jobless Incarnation, One Piece, and Baruto. And that'll probably be it for tomorrow, okay? Next video. Bye.